All right, so what's up, wizards? Uh, sorry for the noise. You got the noisy highway in the background. Neighbors mowing the lawn. Hopefully, you can hear me okay. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm kind of excited about this. So today, I I'm, get to talk to you a little bit more about the defense mechanisms, advanced patrol outer carrier, right? They're APOC. Now, I did a video on this a while back just talking about how much I liked it over some of the other um, some of the other carriers that I've had in my career. I'm very grateful, very grateful to some of you. I reached out to a couple of you and got some additional carriers that are similar to ones that I've had in the past. I also have my MSA Paraclete that I talked about in the, uh, the last APOC video. And I just kinda wanna show you how I have it set up the things that I like about it compared to, to some of these other carriers that I've used in the past. And uh, yeah, let's, let's get right into it. All right, before we j jump into the video, I gotta say something that's probably gonna be a shocker for everyone out there. Yeah, one of Jason's videos is sponsored. Today's video is sponsored by Nocturne Industries. Nocturne is driving night vision innovation with the modular Daisho bridge that allows for an intelligent upgrade path to move from a single Tonto and upgrade into the full articulating dual nod setup. Whether you're a seasoned expert in night vision or just getting started in nighttime fun, Nocturne Industries has you covered. And so for me, you know, I, I don't own night vision currently, the Nocturne method or their style is of particular interest to me because I want to get a PBS 14, but being able to upgrade it to the Daisho bridge is something that would be pretty cool in the future. If you're interested in following the path that I'm going to follow, which is buying the Tonto PBS 14 from Nocturne Industries and upgrading later on, don't forget to use discount code TLDCO, save you some money. Now on with the video. Oh, there's a con that I have with this that I didn't really know until, uh, until I started messing with it and using it more. And we'll get into that in a little bit. So first off, I wanna show you kind of some of the competition that's, that's out there. And what I'm looking for is a carrier that can hold level 3A, doesn't have to be box cut, doesn't matter what really what it is, but level 3A soft armor that then you could put hard armor plates in. So I showed off my, let's get this out of the way, my MSA Paraclete, right? I showed that off in the last um, uh, APOC video. Um, this literally has been my my go to war uh, carrier. Um, this thing has, this thing has, has gone through a lot. I'm just kind of looking at, I'll show this off, but like some of the, the zippers on the back, I used to have a carabiner back here. It was all scratched out because I would wear this thing like climbing underneath vehicles looking for, looking for, you know, if someone planted a, a little bomb or something underneath our vehicle, just in training, but have done a lot of work with this carrier in law enforcement over the years. And I, I still genuinely love this carrier. It's, it's by far, by far the the most comfortable carrier that I've had in my law enforcement career, um, even more comfortable than the than the APOC, um, but it's definitely a lot bulkier and there's things about it that um, the APOC just does better. So not as comfortable, but lighter. Um, I think better material. I think this is going to last a lot longer. I hope it lasts a lot longer. So that is the MSA Paraclete. Okay. Now another one that one of our viewers sent in, and I think this is a pretty common one. This does not have any, there's no soft armor in this. Oh, this guy wrote his name on it, blocked that out. But this is a second chance, second chance carrier. Um, so you could put your, your soft armor into this one. And there's a pouch on the inside that you would put your hard armor plates. The thing that I don't like about this, and I have had these before, you do have the belly band. So you kind of get it tight around the belly, but to get the, the actual carrier kind of tight on you to be comfortable enough, you kind of need, kind of need help. The way that they designed this one, there's this elastic 
Velcro in the front. And after you have this on, you have to reach it around back and Velcro it to the back. And what I would do when I had a carrier like this, I would kind of get it where I thought it was, it was good, but it still needed to be a little bit tighter. And then I'd have to get a buddy, you know, to grab a hold of it, pull it tighter and make sure that it was attached to the Velcro just fine. Um, yeah, so Second Chance, pretty, pretty popular brand back in the days. I think they were bought out by Safari Land. Whoever was using this like bright blue carrier, I mean, I know who it is, but I feel bad for, feel bad for those of you that are using something like this. Um, and to be honest, I <laughs> had one just like the same color and everything. Um, so this is a little different, right? You have, whereas the second, second chance one had a place on the inside that you could put your your plates these have pockets on the outside so you would have your level three inside you'd have this like really poorly designed because the plate goes in from the bottom so all that weight is sitting there and then you're just it's a it's a thin strip of velcro um not a lot of a molly not a lot of attention uh, uh, attachment points this is better than the second chance in my opinion in terms of design because you have the attachment points pulling forward. You can get a little bit more tightness on that. So that's cool. So let's get this thing on. Here we go. Our hair out of the way. Glasses back on. Let's see how this does. Well, I got a belt on. Stand back. So belly band goes on, which is kind of nice. Okay. Bring that around, bring this forward, attach the first spear tubes, lock it in over there. This one forward, first spear tubes. There we go. All right. So, is everything out of the way? Yeah, this baton is kind of stuck there, right? But everything else I have good access to, um, to a certain extent. So where the, the pistol pouch is, I got to do some adjustment here. Not really fond of that. Um, I could attach it to the front of the, this is all Agilite stuff that I have on this DMA POC. So the Agilite three, three, uh, I forgot what they call this AGR three or something like that, or APR three, whatever it is. Um, Nice that it does have molly on the front that I could take this pouch and put it there because I, I don't really like the placement of the pistol pouch or my general purpose pouch. I think they're, they're too far back. Now, that's really kind of because of how this APOC, how it's put together. And I'll get on the bench top here and, and kind of show you what I mean. My Agilite general purpose pouch is here. And the way that they designed this part that connects in with the first spear tube, it's kind of the only place that I could, I could put it um, at this height, right? I, I want it here, but I can't put it here. And here's why. When they sewed this up, you see how they have stitching here at the top and at the bottom, and that's where the curved material hooks in. And I, I like this because you have some added struck you know rigidness and struck good structure um, but because they sewed here and how I see you can see how I have my my uh, general purpose pouch attached here you can see how I have my agilite general purpose pouch attached here going coming through this bottom uh, line of, of pals web in this laser laser cut stuff I can't do that here because they have they have this stitching done here at the bottom, right? So then I could move it up one. I could bring it over here and I can move it up one. But I tried that on the other side, you'll see, let me slide this over, get these out of here. Slide this over, you kind of see, this is probably greater frustration for me. So I was able to get this kind of kind of where I wanted it. Get these mags out of here. Let 
Now I had to bypass, I had to, I had to get it in a spot where it would bypass this X stitching here, right? So if you wanted to run um, pistol pouches on this, like this, this is really the only spot that you can put it. You can't go up one or down one because of that X stitching that's right there. You can't go down too far because then you'll run into the same problem that I had on the other side with the stitching, by the way you, stitching here at the bottom. Like this is just unusable. So this is my only real con that I have for this, this um, APOC is you have to know, you have to pay attention to that. I didn't initially and make sure that you install these things where you want them, but sometimes where you want them, well, it's just not gonna agree with you in terms of how this was sewn together and where you can put your pouches. All right, so where am I with all of this? Well, I think there's some benefits that the MSA Paraclete, being as old of a system as it is, MSA I don't think owns Paraclete anymore. You can still buy a Paraclete. Um, I just don't know, I don't think MSA owns it. Um, so some of the features that it has are, are pretty cool, like the pull away system. You could pull this cord out and the entire carrier just kind of falls off of you. And the idea behind that when we were deployed was in case you were to roll over, um, you could get out of this thing easily and uh, you know get out, of the, get out of whatever vehicle you might be stuck in. But are you gonna use that like here in the States? I get it as a deployment rig. It was great for me. There's a lot of stuff, zippers and the, the buttons and stuff like that that are just kind of old school. The other thing about the Paraclete, like the, the soft armor that's in here has expired. It's been expired for probably 10 years. And I reached out to Paraclete, sent them some pictures and was like, hey, I want to get new inserts for this because I do like this carrier. And I think I was quoted $800 for inserts for this, okay? For that same price, I could get almost this entire setup that you see here with the soft armor, uh, the hard armor plates that are in here, and the pouches. So let's go over the carrier first. The APOC, as you see here, at this cut, without all the accessories, you're looking at about 400 bucks. Now, the, the Agilite pouches that I have on here, are like another 130 bucks, and then the soft armor inserts you're three hundred dollars four hundred dollars you know you got to get the box cut inserts but those work in here no problem um i think if you were to add the hard armor plates you know you're probably pushing a thousand to twelve hundred dollars for this this whole setup eight hundred dollars just for just for the inserts for this not to mention the cost of the carrier itself so about half the price, you can have a setup that's that has almost all the features that this has, is better material, lighter material, and will probably last you as long. Uh, I think I still think DM knocked this one out of the park. The the frustrations that I have with with kind of the laser cut and how they they stitched it together and how it just kind of limits where you can mount things, that's easily overcome just change the position, you know, get used to where, where the pouches sit, a little different than how you would normally have them, and stop crying about it, like I am. You'll get over it, trust me. Yeah, man, that's it for me, guys. Uh, DM, APOC, still like it, still my, my go-to law enforcement carrier, and it's something for our LEO folks that are out there. If you're looking for something that can hold soft armor inserts, hard armor on the outside, I would seriously give a look at the defense mechanisms APOC, see if it would be a good fit for you or your department. All right guys, I'm out of here. Golly, you guys, sorry about the guy mowing lawn over there. All right.